Hi everyone, my name is T and welcome to Front End Fanatic. Thank you for joining me today. Today I'm going to show you how to make this really simple product card with a hover state on the button. So without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, so I've already got my folder open. I'm going to add the index.html file. Then I'm going to add the style sheet. Then I'm going to go back to my index. I'm going to pull up the boilerplate using Emmet. Then I'm going to link my style sheet. Right, and I'm going to give it a title as well, product card. So I'm going to go in between my body tag and I'm going to create a div of the class of container. So I'm going to do it using Emmet to make my life a bit easier. And then I'm going to put an image tag and I'm going to go ahead and get my image from this website. I'm going to right click, go to copy link address, and then I'm going to paste it in the source. And I'll give it an alt saying a picture, pick, ooh, picture of plants like that. And I've done that. So now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create another div and I'm going to give it the class of text. In there, I'm going to give it h1. And inside the h1, it's going to say the plant life. Then I'm going to go ahead and make an h2, which is a bit smaller than the h1. It's just going to say an online exclusive. Then I'm going to use a p tag and insert some dummy text. So I'm just going to write lorem uh, 18. Yeah. And then hit enter. That gives me a bit of dummy Latin. I don't really know what I want to write there. Then I'm going to insert a button element with shop now inside it like that and hit save. Okay. And that's pretty much all we need for our HTML. Okay. That's done. So next thing I'm going to do now is start styling it. Right, so in order to start styling, I want to import a font. So I'm going to go to Google Fonts. And as you can see, I've already pre-selected my styles. I've gone for light 300 in Montserrat and 400 regular in font weight. And in order to import this into my CSS file, I'm just going to copy this little import link here. Save. So that's Control C. OK, don't take the style bits unless you're planning to insert that into your actual HTML document, but we're using CSS. So um, it's a control C and then I'm going to just import it right at the top of the style sheet like that. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select all the elements on the page and I'm going to do that using the asterisk. OK, because I want to give everything a margin of zero and I want a box sizing border box and then I also want the font family to be Montserrat like we just did. Go back to the page if you like or you can type it but it's right here in the bottom right hand corner. So just copy this, paste that there and then hit save. So we've sorted out the font. Now I'm going to center all the elements within the body so I'm going to target the body. The way that I target everything is display flex justify content center and align items center and then I'm going to give it a minimum height of 100 viewport height so that's going to be right in the center of the page and then I'm going to give the body a background color of 025 a11 like that it's a lovely green color and I'm going to save that Next thing I'm going to do is target the container. The container is just this thing here. It holds all of our content. So we're going to container. And I'm going to give it a width of 550 pixels. And then I'm going to give it a display of flex because I want the elements to be side by side. Then I'm going to select a property called flex flow. And what flex flow does is you have to insert two values. And one is flex direction. In this case, I want it to be, sorry, a row. 
and then you have to select the flex wrap value and in this case I want it to be no wrap so if we was to change the size of the window the elements won't move out of place okay so I'm gonna save that and then I'm going to move on to give it a background color of sort of a light gray so that's f4 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 then I'm going to give it a box shadow so it's gonna have the card itself is going to have a shadow that's going to be two pixels, two, oops, two pixels, six pixels, and an RGBA value of, it's going to be like a sort of um, black, like a opaque black. So that's going to be zero, 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 and then the value is going to be 0 0.5 because I don't want it to be, you know, solid black. I want it to be opaque slightly. So that's how we achieve that. And then I'm going to give the whole container a border radius of five pixels because I want the edges to be sort of rounded off slightly. Next I'm going to actually move on to style the image. So the image is right here, it's the second thing here that we need to style. So how I do that is image tag, right? And what I want to do is change the size of the um, image because I don't know if I've shown you just yet. Let me just open this in live server. Right, the image is here, but it is quite big. And so at the moment, you won't be able to see any of the other styling that I've applied to it because of how big the image is. So we're gonna change the size of that right now. And I'm gonna change the width to about roughly 45%. And I'm gonna hit save. Let's go back and see what that's done. There you go, just like that. It's changed how big the picture was. And now we can actually see what I'm working on. So now that we've done that, I want the image to fit its container, so I'm going to select Object Fit, Property, hit Cover, Save, and then I'm going to change the borders. Now, as I was saying before, if I just zoom in slightly, you can actually see that these borders are sort of rounded off slightly, they're not sharp. But on this side, on the actual left hand side, you can see that they're actually still quite sharp. And the reason it's like that is because the border radius hasn't been set yet on the image. And so it's still sort of in its original forms. But we want it to just match this. So we're going to go and target that now. So that's going to be border top left radius, right? It's going to be inherit. because we're inheriting it from its container. And then I'm just gonna copy this. And I'm gonna save it, well, sorry, I'm gonna paste it there and then I'm going to change that to bottom because we want the top and the bottom left radius, right, to change. So I've saved that, let's go ahead and look at it now. And now you can see it actually matches the other side. That's exactly what we want. So the next thing we are going to do is we are going to target the text container and that is pretty much all of this, okay? So it's going to be all of the elements within this text div, okay? So we're going to do that by obviously text and what I want is general styling to apply to all the elements inside um, the text div. So I'm going to give all the elements padding of 2.5 REM top and bottom and 2 two REM left and right then I'm going to give every element a letter spacing of one pixel just so that it's not too cramped together and it's easy to read it's save and now let's go and look at what that's done and there you have it it's given us let me zoom out now because I think you guys get it right so you can see it's given us padding all around the edges what exactly what we wanted and now I'm just going to target this bit here okay the H1 I'm going to target that so since it's inside the container okay it's right here we're going to target it like this so it's going to be text h1 okay and i'm going to give it a font weight of 400 save and then i'm going to change the color to a sort of dark green color like a more plant looking color just to sort of fit in with the theme so that's going to be one two three six oh c and then save that let's go and look at that there it is this is it and then i'm going to move on to the 
text H2. If you remember, there was a H2. It's this part here. Okay, so let's target that. And we're going to give it a padding top. Two pixels, because you don't want it to be too squashed into like the... the um, first heading here we don't want it to be too close to it so we're just going to give a little spacing in between that's what we've done there so save and then I'm going to change the font weight to 300 to make it a little less heavy to make it lighter than the actual um, top heading the h1 heading and save that and then I'm going to give it font size of 10 pixels because I want it to be small and hit save let's go and look at that there you go there it is it's gone really small now it's right there and the font weight's changed this can't really see it that well but we're going to sort of make it a bit more bold by giving it a letter spacing of four pixels okay so it's spread quite wide and then we're going to change the text sorry to uppercase And then we're going to set that to uppercase, hit save, let's go and look at that again. There it is. Just changed before our eyes and it should look like this. So it's a lot more um, noticeable in that way. Okay, so now that we've done that, my next step is to go and style the P tag within the text div. Okay, so we're going to target that now. So that's going to be text P and Let's move up slightly. I'm going to give the padding of the P it's a little bit more space. As you can see, this is all sort of, you know, scrunched together. We don't really want that. And so I want to give some space at the top of the paragraph and at the bottom. So it's sort of its own section. So let's go and do that now. So that's going to be padding 1.5 1 REM, top and bottom, and zero left and right. We're going to give it a line height of 1.5. Save that. Let's go and look at the line height. There you go. You can see there's some space in between each sentence, so it's quite easy to read, spaced out. And then we are going to give it a font size, 14 pixels. And save. Look at that again. There we are. Lovely. And then we are going to target the next thing, which is the button, which is here. Okay, so let's go and target the button. So that's text, then button. And the first thing I'm going to do is apply some padding to the button. So the padding is going to be 10 pixels top and bottom and 45 pixels left and right. And let's save that and go look at it now. So you can see, ooh, there we are. You can see that it's um, a lot bigger now. Okay, but it doesn't really align with all the text. So what I'm going to do is make it 100% of this text container. And so let's go and do that now. So that's width, 100%. Save it. Let's go back and look again. There you go. So it's 100% of the text container. Right, and now I'm just going to um, change the border to two pixels solid. And we want the color to be the same color as the um, the H1. So that's one, two, three. There we are. Then I'm going to change the border radius to match the border radius of everything else, which is five pixels. Right. And then I'm going to change the color of the text in the button to the same color as the H1. Then I'm going to change the font size to 16 pixels. Okay, so it, it actually you know, fits the button properly. And then I'm going to transform the text. So text transform to uppercase. And then I'm going to give the button a transition because we're going to add a hover state and we don't want the... Um, the transition to be too harsh. We want it to sort of smoothly transition when you hover over it with your mouse. So we're going to write transition duration, and that's 0.5 seconds. It's gonna be nice and smooth, and let's save that. Let's go and look at our button now. 
go and this is what we've got so far it's looking a lot better isn't it and the last thing we're going to do is just add a hover state to our button like I said so text button and a pseudo class of hover and then what we want to do is when you hover it the background color changes so background color will be the same color as the h1 keep it nice and consistent and the color of the text is going to be white okay and then we're going to change the cursor to a pointer every time it sort of goes over the um, button so let's save all that and let's go and look at our work here's our button so let's now hover over it like so and it should look like this and I don't know if you can see that transition but a very smooth if it wasn't there it wouldn't be so smooth it'd be very sharp yeah so this is pretty much it this is our product card very simple very easy but you could easily build off of this this is just sort of a foundation type product card you can easily just change things add elements it's all up to you but I just wanted to give you guys sort of like the blueprint and you can you know do whatever you want with it from there but anyway, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Thank you for watching and please don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and I'll be back with more videos like this. Bye.